morning again. So I read a little bit this morning uh, from my forthcoming book, and I want to read uh, some more poetry from the book. Hmm. A few verses composed in glorification of the Balaram to begin our discussion this morning. Some uh, descriptive rather than narrative. Sevaka Bhagavan. Feet soft like the lotus, long strong arms with hands that reach to his knees, broad chest garlanded with gunja, dark hair raised and tied in the top knot, circled with a bounty of forest flowers, Balaram's beauty knows no bounds. His complexion clear and white, reflective like reflective moonlight. Bhagavan of friendly frame of mind, he sometimes serves while at other times is concerned with how his younger brother behaves. Sages call him a live. Mighty, witty, wise, and well dressed in midnight blue, Tilak made in musk deer hue, his chest kissed by a single earring, a lotus circled by bees, decorates his other ear. O Balaram, a voice deep in tone, when will I hear your call to serve the sound of the buffalo horn? Balaram, to So I wanted to uh, then explain a little bit from the narrative for what you read this morning that may be appropriate and uh, see where that takes us. These, these are some excerpts from, I said, my forthcoming book about Sakurati, uh, of Uta Bhakti, but it is also about the Sakurati of Uta Bhakti only in Braj. Sakurati also extends beyond uh, the Braj to the metropolitan leelas of Krishna. We find it in Mathura, in Dwarka, and in Pandavas, in Draupadi. And we find it uh, as an admixture in, in Dwarka, in Uddhava's Dasya Bhakti as well. So, It has its range within uh, Krishna Leela, and it, uh, it, it, is, it is manifest also in Ayodhya, in, 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 in Ram Leela, only in, in relation with uh, where Balaram also appears as Lakshman, Lakshman Ram. But it's available to us only in Krishna Leela. In other words, uh, the, the, the window of opportunity for Bhakti Rasa in Ram Leela, it does not extend to Sakya, Vatsalya, Madhurya, but the Dasya Bhakti of Hanuman, although there is some expression of Sakya, they say Lakshman. And, uh, and Vatsalya, as opposed to Vaikuntha, Krishna doesn't have any, Narayan doesn't have any parents there. And of course, uh, the uh, consort of, of Sita, but just as Ram is Ek Patni Vratta, took a, vi a vow, this Ram, Ram Chandra, you have only one wife, and so you can become a gopi of Ram. Mm -hmm. it's, not, it's not possible. Similarly, you cannot have Patsali Bhakti with Ram. Neither 
this uh, sake. But the presence of these two uh, sentiments, rasas, in this special region, if you will, of Vaikuntha, known as Ayodhya, where Bhagavan Narayan is appearing as a uh, in a human like form. We find some some expression of these rasas, and in this way, Ayodhya is actually pointing through these, uh, through through Lakshman, through um, uh, Dasarath, through uh, Sita, to the to the possibility of such um, uh, experiences of sacred aesthetic rapture for us. Pointing, that is, to, to, to Krishna Loka, to Goloka, where we can find it in, in, in Dwaraka to some extent, Matura to some extent, and where they are fully expressed in the Braj Lila of Krishna. <coughs> and, <coughs> excuse me, and of course we're blessed with the, uh, the grace and powerful, powerful and very compassionate outreach of Nityananda Prabhu and Gaur Lila that uh, has um, done more than any other um, effort and as a person has done more than any other person or divine figure to promote the Madhuri Rasa of, uh, of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's dispensation even while he himself is steeped in Sakyarasa and provides thereby as a, in a subordinate role, his Sakyarasa is nonetheless an opportunity to experience it, to enter into that. Um, so, our concern, at least in, in, in the book, is with, and, and really, as in terms of our sampradaya, is with, the, if at all, with the sakyarati of Braj. So, our book, uh, all, our, our narrative uh, introduction, if you will, that we uh, read this morning, it's kind of a beginning to the first chapter, not the introduction of the book, but the introduction of the first chapter. Um, Describes that uh, the uh, the birth of, of Balaram, and thereby the birth of Sakyarasa, and of course Braj. Here we find the fountainhead of all divinity in Krishna and Rasaraj, so the fountainhead of all possibilities uh, in terms of sacred aesthetic rapture, uh, and so uh, the, the Sakyarati in its fullest form appears there in Braj and and it, in a sense that in that sense takes birth with Baldev Gordon with the with the birth of of, of Balaram. Mm -hmm. So appropriately yeah. in our uh, text we've begun a book about Sakyarati with some poetic explanation of the appearance of Balaram. And um, the narrative begins with the appearance of, of Purnamasi and Madhu Mangal on the scene in Braj. The scene, of course, at the time is one of um, an underlying um, say anxiety. How can that be? In Braj, in Vrindavan, an underlying unspoken um, anxiety or concern. The concern arises from the fact that Nanda and Yashoda, the king and queen of the cowherds, are getting old and they have had no son. What is a family life without a son and a daughter? 
Mm -hmm. Without children. And of course the son, in this case, would in this cultural milieu would be the heir to the to the uh, to the, the kingdom of the Kauravas, the leader of the Kauravas. Nanda Maharaj is the leader, although he was not the eldest son, typically the eldest son would be chosen, and he was. Um, Parjanya, the grandfather of Krishna, who had uh, five sons, five Nandas. Nanda is the verbal Sanskrit root for bliss. Ananda, all his sons. Nanda, uh, Upananda, Sananda, and so on. Five of them, five Nandas. <clears throat> Amongst them, Upananda was the eldest, as you know, and he was, of course, then selected at a certain point to be the heir to the throne, and the coronation ceremony was performed, uh, where officially Upananda became the king. And the first act that he performed as the king of the cowards of Braj was to pass the crown on to the middle brother, Nanda Maharaj. He said, after all, I am only an Upananda. In this sense, he meant, meant a little Nanda, comparatively. So all the brothers <laughs> agreed, and all the people thought it was a very wise, uh, they were very happy with the king. He made a very wise decision that resonated with everybody's sensibilities, as to the speciality, if you will, of the qualities of the one son, Nanda Baba. Hmm? whose son, of course, um, everyone then anticipated for some time, but uh, as time passed and there was no issue from Bishoda, there was an ongoing, kind of slow-burning concern and anxiety amongst the residents of, of Braj. This is a kind of... Uh, how would you call it? Um, <coughs> what is the word for it in Vatsali Ras? Um, not Puvarag, but similar to Puvarag. Puvarag is called Madhuri Rasa. Before meeting lovers, before meeting, feeling separation from one another, having not yet said or heard from one another, I love you, but feeling as such. In the same Similar type of separation is experienced in, in, in Dasya, in Sakya, and Vatsalya, but um, Pulvarag is a particular term for that experience in Madhurya Rasa. And forgive me, but at the moment, the Sanskrit word, um, maybe you remember Marsh, skips my mind for anybody. A similar idea, the example given in, in uh, I believe in Bhakti Rasa Marita Sindhu is Arjuna. This is, he's a Purisa Mandi. He's a metropolitan city friend of Krishna. And um, he heard about Krishna. I think he saw a picture of Krishna and fell in, 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 into, in, in love in, in Sakya Bhava for him. And uh, of course, before he had met him, so he was experiencing this kind of separation before meeting. And then there's a corresponding union, obviously, with all that, with that type of separation and all the other types of separation. So uh, there's some kind of uh, pervading uh, uh, sense of separation before the birth of Krishna that is causing this anticipation and, and, and wishfulness, if you will, hope, desire, you know, the world is, is, is really desire-driven. So it's an observer, Gita says, it's an observer-driven reality, the world. Hmm? Be careful what you desire, that they say. You may, it might happen. Hmm? Um, the matter is, is, is simply a sea of potentialities. 
And when agitated by the will, by desire, then it takes shape, it manifests, and so on and so forth. Bhagavan Vishnu's reflection on Maya from a distance causes her to move, begin to take shape, and so forth. As he reflects on her, mm -hmm. what to do with her. <laughs> Can't get too close to her, but you can't ignore her either. Mm -hmm. She's my own Shakti, my separated Shakti. So sometimes it's described as a glance, but a glance may also be, may also refer to it as a reflection. Mm -hmm. And consciousness is then reflected in matter and the world, and the jivas are impregnated into the womb of material nature and, and the world starts to go around, if you will, by the force of their uh, desire. So Golokas is, is similar, I mean it's not different in, in that sense, other than the fact that rather than the material energy being the, the ocean of potentiality, it's the Sarusha, Krishna's internal energy. It is the ocean of potentiality that when in touch with his desire or his desire as played out through his friends, through his lovers, associates and so forth, then the Shakti is manifesting. Just like yourself, you will have a form in Goloka, it's a gopa or a gopi. Someone may say, now it's said that the, the Swarup is eternal. Nityasiddha Krishna Prem Sadya Kokonai Shravana Disuddha Chitte Kodeli Udhoi. It's not something that is the, the, our goal, our ideal, is not something that is a product within time. Hmm? All things that are products within time are problems for us because in time they appear and, and they have a time. Therefore, hmm? a time in which they will disappear. Appearance is, in time, is the beginning of disappearance. Rita says, was born, is, will die. Right? Uh, so, we can't have a goal that is not eternal. This is how Krishna describes his abode in the Gita, in several places. My place is different. My abode is different. Up to Brahma Lok even. Maybe a desirable place. Long life. The life of Brahma is is fantastic, right? Fantastic, eight something, <laughs> fantastic number that you could, if you, if you knew today you were going to live that long, you might take it easy. <laughs> We've got time. <laughs> I've got time. Hmm? But Krishna says, from Brahma on down, hmm? then Everyone has to take birth again, which means those abodes are not eternal. But mine, by contrast, this is a, it's a, it's a simple point, but it's an important point, especially um, to uh, share in the international community of Gaudiya Vaishnavas, where there are some uh, ideas about the nature of Goloka and the Prayojan that are. Um, well, uh, not supported by the scripture and, and problematic for us thereby. The idea that, that like Brahma's planet, you can come down from there, you will take birth again. Krishna says, those abodes who can take birth again. The difference in mine is, those who live there, they never take birth. Yad Gattvanam Vartan Tita Dhamma Paramam. What does he say? He says, Natan Pasha Ite Suryodha Shashan Kona Pavaka. 
He's describing it as luminous, right, through different, uh, drawing on different uh, features of nature that, uh, that we rely upon here for light, sun, moon, fire. He says, my abode is, 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 is not illumined by sun, by moon, by fire. He's citing the prominent luminous aspects, uh, features of nature. And luminosity, of course, is uh, a, what do we say, a metaphor for, for, for knowing. You know, you see the light bulb in the head on the government's in the graphics, right? The light went on. Mm -hmm. so, so knowing, uh, tapa, tapa means fire, it means, uh, it means austerity, it means knowledge also. It also ultimately tapa, bhakti, it means sacrifice. It comes to bhakti, ultimately. Gopal tapani to shed light on Gopal. Hmm? Brahma's tapa. Hmm? What do you think his tapa was? We heard these two syllables, tapa, when he meditated. What, 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 what was his tapa about? What did, what did it result in? It resulted in the darshan of, of, of Krishna in Gopavesh, dressed as a Gopal. A little bit uncharacteristically, dressed as a Gopa with a Gyan Mudra. But the point is, what kind of tapa will you do? Lay on a bed of nails, <laughs> or, or fasting, uh, submerging yourself into the Ganga, to the neck, at, uh, in the month of Mog, at, at, at midnight or dawn, at the whole cold, coldest time of the day, something like that. This will not give the result, if you will, of, uh, of uh, the kind of darshan that Brahma got. So, from this we can understand this top ultimately comes to the idea of, of bhakti. Love is born not from the womb of sacrifice. When our senses, our body uh, suffers, then the way in which we deal with that is by going within. Let's, let's say you get arrested and you get you know, tied up and so forth and you're in a very difficult situation. How do you deal with that? The, the way, you're, you're in a forced situation of tapa. So even by force, what happens is that inner life starts to wake, you start to reason about it, you start to look at a bigger picture, become philosophical, some way you can live through it. So restricting the outgoing, uh, if you will, uh, 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 the attraction for outward going and taking from the world, exploiting, uh, and Instead, turning within, this is the basic, basic idea of, of, uh, of, uh, of spiritual life. So, how do we get there? So, uh, some, some tangent there. Uh, uh, so, anyway, our ideal is, uh, well, it's like Brahma's ideal. And um, and his ideal also is uh, as to continue on a tangent was uh, such that having the darshan of Krishna in Gopavesh, Krishna extended to him, as Bhagavatam explains, the opportunity to, to for security. These are the words of Bhagavatam. We have a, a relationship, as Vishwanath Thakur comments, in, in a friendly sentiment. Hmm? He got that opportunity, and he got an opportunity to see that, what that was all about, in due course, after his initiation, 
during the Brahma Vimohan Lila. There he saw Krishna in Gopavesh, but not with a Gyan Mudra. It looked like an, an impersonation of his guru. Looks like my guru, but he's not acting like a guru. Instead of sitting and giving Upanishadic wisdom in the four essential verses of the Bhagavatam, for example, and uh, blessing me with knowledge, diksha, gopal mantra, and so forth. He's putting food in his friend's mouth, and, and they're taking food from their mouth, and putting it in his mouth. As soon as they taste it, they think, that tastes so good. I should share it with him. Take it out of their mouth and put it in his mouth. Seeing this, he was he was given a full uh, view. Is this what you want? <laughs> you wanted to be my friend. Is this what you want? He couldn't quite understand it. His brown his forehead. He was properly initiated for some time. Still, he couldn't quite understand that goal. That's what we were talking about, the goal. We're talking about it here for a moment in terms of Sakyarasa, of course, that's the subject. But prior to that, I was saying, to continue in a straight line, that the road of Krishna is that place, unlike the other places that, that you could go. It is luminous. It is full of knowledge. It means, and, and that is why he says, Although there's no need for sun, there's no need for the moon, there's no need for electricity, hmm? it's luminous, and therefore, there's, there's, no, there's no falling from there. Hmm? There's no ignorance. But you know these things. Hmm? A very special place. And there, Krishna is, is, is playing himself out in terms of being Rasaraj. And the operative the environment that, that facilitates this, that is his Sarup Shakti. So Sarup Shakti, Maya Shakti. They're similar but in many ways, but, but different. Right? There's a both a seas, if you will, of potentiality. And when the Jiva's will, or Bhagavan's will, hmm, is exercised in relation to that environment, the environment re reciprocates. In Golok, in the Leela, in the Paravyam, hmm, the, the, the Sankalpa, the will of the Jiva, is entirely one with the will of Bhagavan. But it doesn't mean that everyone is just <clears throat> moving around, Bhagavan, whatever he wants, I do it. <laughs> whatever he wants. Nimita Mata Baba Sabhisa. This is a different thing. It's mentioned in the Gita, a different thing. To be the instrument of Bhagavan in this world, do something for him, uh, according to his will. It's manifest in a very beautiful, very charming way. We call it rasa. Hmm? Wherein there, there, there is love, the object of love and the love. Hmm? These two are required for us. We become the object the, the, with the love, and he is the object of love. Years ago, I saw a book in the, uh, that was written by a famous, uh, I think he, Cambodian or Vietnamese monk, Thich Nhat Hanh. His book was Being Peace, Being Peace. It's kind of a Gandhi and I thought perspective and be the, what did, what did he say, Gandhi? Be the change, you want to see change that you want to see in, in others or in the world, mm -hmm. right? In the world, yeah. Yeah, be the change that you want. So being, you want peace, be peace. And I thought, yes, it's good, but we want to be love. Love and peace, as I sometimes say. We need both, right? <laughs> love and peace. Being love. So, this is the idea of Gaudi Vaishnava, to be a, 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 a vessel of love, of Sakya Bhav, of Madhurya Bhav. Hmm? We look at it from the, from the 
Abed perspective, then as it's talking about it, talked about in the sutras and the Upanishads, where that emphasis is stronger, the non-difference, the non-difference. The Upanishads emphasize this non-difference, non-difference. That means they are the beginning texts. They are the beginning texts about inquiry into Brahman. Hmm? Inquiry and pursuit, life pursuit beyond a religious orientation to a spiritual orientation. First, Dharma Jagnasu, inquire about how to be human and, and, and make your human life legal. Legalize it. Civilize it. Hmm? You've come from animal life now. There's, a, there's an animality to you, but, but now you have the opportunity in, in, in conjunction with revelation to, to be, be different, to be different, to, to, do, to say please, to say thank you, to have gratitude for the bounty of life, to share it voluntarily, to make a sacrifice. You can't ask your dogs to do that. Why don't you let, you know, Fido eat first? You know, you, you can't, they just go, right? They're driven by their a particular embodiment that doesn't give them the chance, the opportunity to ask. And they often say, why? About meaning, about purpose, about value. These are all questions that have nothing to do with matter. They have something to do with conscious, everything to do with consciousness. And when, and when, and when we talk about quality, qualitative existence rather than a quantitative measurement of reality, feeling, purpose, kindness arises. The opportunity to do something voluntarily rather than just be so embodied, if you will, that the embodiment is driving the whole affair, that Maya Shakti is driving the whole affair. In human life, it's like you get on probation. You're out of the jail, you're still being watched. <laughs> so now how you will act, how you will conduct yourself, if that's good, then you can go further, you can be promoted. You have some freedom, but that comes some responsibility. So that is Dharma Jivnasu, inquiry into how to temper and color my life with consideration of the fact that those things that I want, that I need, that I feel that I need, I'm not independent in acquiring them. This is a basic idea. That that I require sun to see, I require light to see. There's no greater manifestation of light than the sun, and arguably all light comes from the sun, even if you develop it electrically, you know, computerize it, and so it, it, it's derived. Hmm? So, so we, we so. We live uh, in a thankful, grateful type of life where we approach and interact with nature with, uh, uh, in a loving way. It's said that if you love someone, they'll tell you all their secrets. So you won't be in any ignorance if you learn how to love. Right? It's, it's true, you, you can feel it, know it, you've experienced it. If you love someone, then there's, there's nothing that you won't know about. And that they won't know about you. So love is a kind of knowing. Again, Raja Vidya. Krishna says, you want to know? <laughs> Here's my Upanishad discourse, Arjun says. Knowledge. Or Krishna says, excuse me, what is knowledge? He says, Manmana Bhagavad Madhyaji Mamaskuru. He tells Arjun, to love me, to, to love me is to know me. I'm unknowable. I am unknown and unknowable. It means can't be captured by knowledge. Knowledge is 
Sattvic. Action is Rajasi. Bhakti is Nirguna. On his own terms, if we approach, if the opportunity to approach on his own terms is made available to us by him. Yes, we have some will to exercise, but we only have the opportunity to exercise will in relation to him if he makes the opportunity available to us. Of course, he's not involved. That is another thing. Because if he was involved, then people would fault him. The devotees would not allow him to be involved. They do the work of canvassing, choosing who will get bhakti and who will not. Hmm? And they really don't choose who will and who not. They just try to give it to everybody. <laughs> they just try to give it to everybody. They are the Kripa Shakti of Bhagavan. They are his manifestation of his mercy in the world. Bhakti is arising in their hearts. And it's very nature as such that, that it's so fulfilling that one feels the necessity to share it. If I could move a little in this way and touch them with this, what would be the, what would be the result? I know what the, the result of, what would be the result of them? Hmm? One feels like this. That bhakti is, in one sense, the, compa the very compassionate nature of Krishna. So, Kripa is an ocean of mercy, of compassion, and kindness. For themselves, they have no sorrow. But they feel some sorrow for others in two ways. They have some experience of sorrow. Hmm? They've been there. That's one thing. The other side is, they are so happy. <laughs> so much ananda, again, as I was saying earlier. So, it, 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 by its nature, it, it seeks to, to share itself. Love seeks to share itself. Hmm? You want to get up and talk about it. There was this actor, this uh, young, he's not young anymore, but handsome young man, what's his name? Um, as most of them are. <laughs> what's his name? Uh, Tom Cruise. Heard of him, right? He's a famous actor. So, some years ago, he, he married, married a girl who idolized him in her youth. In other words, she was a, a kind of a groupie of Tom Cruise. And uh, so, I don't know, they must have been pretty far apart in age, I guess, but uh, not enough for it to be too controversial. At any rate, she ended up marrying uh, her teenage, you know, idealized sweetheart. And Tom was quite overwhelmed by it too, apparently. So um, he was on the show, the uh, like something like the Oprah Winfrey show. I don't think it exists anymore, but um, maybe she has her own show. But it was a very famous show at the time. And so at some point in the, in the discussion, we were talking about his relationship, and he jumped up on the couch and started, like, talking about it. He was animated about his feelings and so forth. So, as I said also the other day, I was saying, and I've said it before, in, in the realm of karma, we move by the force of obligation. In the realm of Lila, we move not out of emptiness and necessity uh, and force, but, but out of fullness, completeness. So uh, uh, this, is, this is the movement of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. The hands moving, the movement in the Leela. It's, um, it's, by its very nature, it seeks to share itself. And of course, it also sees, oh, I can't share it. Tom got a little embarrassed after that. Anybody? Keep it to yourself. I mean, no, oh, you love her, but I mean, you know, that's enough. Mm -hmm. So the, the devotees, they try to share it, and then also they need time in their own space. Mm -hmm. What can be done? They try to share. But even though Tucker said, what did he say? I tried to preach. I hatched so many preaching strategies. I came up with, I wrote so many books, but 
Nobody cares for it. Close the door, put some prashad under the door once a day. I'm done. That was the last four years of his life. And the great public figure, Thakur Bhakti Vinod, the father of our Paribar, Bhakti Vinod Paribar. So much he did for sharing the dispensation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And in the end, he said, ah, nobody cares. <laughs> My Guru Maharaj made a big effort, you know, he was very empowered to, to widely uh, disseminate Chaitanya Mahaprabhu's teaching, similar to the way Nityananda Prabhu did, without like a lot of, sometimes not, not, not so philosophical, but chant and be happy and somehow take prasadam. And this is, uh, <laughs> and he wrote many books, of course, but still, it, it, it just needs to cross some of the T's and dot some of the I's there go forward, some little service has been left uh, for us, but a broad campaign, and I, I was with him once, uh, and more than one occasion, but once in New York, when this kind of thing happened in New York, uh, with him on, in the elevator, and he said, I said, you know, problems your preaching is so wide, and I said, you're doing so, and he, he said, oh, I'm just, doing some nonsense here, you know, something, yeah. and, uh, and exactly what he said, I, I'll have to paraphrase, but the idea was, like Bhakti Vinod, like, yeah, but who's interested in making all this effort? Still, anyone can continue the effort and so forth, but, but um, at times also he told us, you should boil the milk, you should boil the milk. We have enough devotees now. We're lucky we got one. When he came to America, he said he was prepared to preach to the walls. He didn't know what he would encounter, or what type of reception he might get, if any at all, and so forth. So sometimes we need to place, place emphasis on preaching, kirtan, and so forth. It's important. It's important for us. Hmm? It's important for us. If we share the teachings with others, that will be good for us. It will be good for them, whether they'll take advantage of it, when, I should say, that's another thing. So, this preaching is, what is the saying? It's, it's a, it's a, um, it's a, it's a labor of, um, it's a, it's a, there's an English adage, and I can't recall, but it's um Anyway, it's, a, it's something that you care a lot about it, you do it, but you don't get the results <laughs> that you, you, you would like mm, more often than not. Mm. People are very concerned about finding a good guru, and I agree with them. And um, what they don't stop to think about sometimes is that it's as hard as it is to find a good guru, it's hard to find a good student. Very difficult. But the Vaishnava is a very kind, a very compassionate to make effort to try. But mm -hmm. even though it made such effort, so many strategies he came up with in the end, he just closed down the shop and entered into the river. Mm -hmm. You can say he spoke so much, so nicely about Krishna, he took even some liberties philosophically to try to integrate it into the Western world and have it accepted and so forth. At a certain point, Krishna just silenced him. Come and stay with me. Enough. You can never say enough about me. That's a fact. One cannot say enough about me. I cannot be captured by lag, by sound, by, by word, by language, by thought, hmm? and by love, the love, the effort you've made. Hmm? I cannot stay separate from you. You brought him into that world, that world of they say, world of no return. There, hmm, the Sarup Shakti is, is the potentiality. And the desire of Bhagavan, the desire of the, of the Jiva, 
that is one with Bhagawan. In other words, to enter there, you have to become a sadhu. You can't have any other desire. Hmm? Pujapachita Marsh marveled at how my Guru Marsh, because he knew him before he left India to go to America, and then saw him when he came back. And then he thought, hmm, something happened along the way. <laughs> something happened along the way. He was very introspective, Sri Ramar, so he reasoned about it and so forth. Hmm? And he got a copy, I don't know where he got it, somehow he got a copy of Prabhupada's poem on the Jaladutta book, where Prabhupada expressed, uh, it's a very beautiful poem where he expresses both the, both Sharanagati, which is relative to sadhana, and the desire to surrender, to give up, hmm? to empty oneself out, to do the bidding of Guru, Gurudev, on the one hand, and then, then he moves to the other side, to bhava, hmm? from Sharanagati and sadhana to bhava, and expresses his aspiration. What does he say? Tomaraminani vai avashe shukha vai kocharani kuti bor kottavani chutta chutti vani kai utukti se din kabi hobi mor. The very sound of the words chuttavani kottavani chutta chutti vani kai utukti. You can understand it. Se din kabi hobi mor. I want this only to sportfully roll and turn somersaults on the ground in various sports to hold my arms up like this and run following the shadows of birds that are flying up above hmm? to jump into the trees with the monkeys hmm? and chase them <laughs> and imitate the sounds of, of of the various creatures of Vrindavan and leap over, over my friends like a frog. <laughs> Sukhamuni in Bhagavad gives a beautiful and extensive description of all these types Kotabani, Chutta Chutibani, Kai from forest to forest, throughout, throughout the whole day, Prabhupada spots. Now he entered into the Sakirati of. Uh, of, of Braj. So heartfully he expresses this, and so appropriately in the language of Bhakti Siddhanta Sarasri Thakur, having, what did he say? First deserve, then desire. So what he meant, I give examples sometimes. If you want to go to India, he said, Swami, I'd like to go to India, I'm all excited about it. Can you tell me all about it? Then I say, do you have a job? No. Oh, say, I say, do you, have, do, you have, do you have a visa? No. Do you have a passport? No. Uh, do you have any money? No. Do you have a job? No. Don't talk to me about going to India then. But I, if you want me to talk about, if you want to go to India, that's good. And I'll tell you how to go, get a job. No, I don't want to go to India. I want to get a job. I want to go to India. He had to get a job so he could get money. But people in India don't have money. But you need money to go there. Right? When you get there, they'll ask for some. <laughs> place where there's money. Then you need to get a passport, then you need a visa. When you get that, then we'll talk about India. Hmm? We'll talk about it. We'll talk about it as much as we can. What it's like. Hmm? But only until you go there and get this in Terry will you know. I think I've been to India. I'm a veteran. <clears throat> so, we should have the desire, certainly. You know, Prabhupada was fond of saying that you should read the first, so study the first nine candles of the Bhagavatam, and not the first, not the, then later the tenth candle. It's appropriate. But he gave, before he gave any cantos, he wrote the Christian book, which is the tenth canto, it's the narrative of the tenth canto. So one of my goblins once asked him, the prophet wrote saying, read the first nine candles, but you gave the Krishna book first and he told us to give it out everywhere. We were selling them everywhere, the Krishna book. And uh, 
Prophet told you have to give a little taste to start with, so they have the desire to begin with where to go. Hmm? And then conduct yourself in such a way that you'll be attracted. That, 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 that the Swarup Shakti will be attracted to you. Hmm? Of course, you can't really qualify yourself. The Swarup Shakti is, 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 is generous beyond any welfare state could possibly be. Hmm? But sometimes devotees make a choice. They think, I'll go to this area rather than that area. People might be more, or, or at least pious over there, something like that. <laughs> so, to go there, hmm? to go into the Lila, to go into that sea of potentiality that is the Srup Shakti. As the material world is a sea of potentiality, we call it the Maya Shakti, and it takes forms and shapes hmm, relative to the, the expression of will, hmm, particularly in human society, which sets the whole thing in motion, and the overarching will of Bhagawan, again, who reflects upon it. So, in Leela, then, hmm? the friends of Krishna, the lovers of Krishna, and so forth. They have so many desires, but all those desires are, in con are, are, are part of what it means to be in Sanjay Rasa, to be in um, Madhuri Rasa, Bhattali Rasa. So there's two sides to look at, from the Veda side, Abed side, non-difference, what it, these bhaktas are, their bodies are Krishna's. They're, they're extensions of Krishna's own senses. Krishna has a transcendental body, transcendental senses, and he gives his transcendental senses to his devotees. So that he has now more senses to taste, to smell, to hear, and experience, and so forth. It's described in, in, in Gobinda Bhasha, commentary of of our Vedanta Charity, of the Vidyabhusha, drawing from the Upanishad. Right? So, it's the Veda perspective. In other words, you got a body, the body is Krishna himself. It means it's his body of Sarup Shakti, it's his own inner Sarup Shakti. It's like Radha is non different from Krishna, one and, and different. And so they're they are tasting as Krishna's tasting. Then we look at it from, from the from the Veda side, then we call it Sakya Rasa, Madhurya Rasa. And we emphasize that Jiva has, a, has will. And now it's expressing its will in relation to the Sarup Shakti, which is a sea of potentiality, and something's happening. And so, the way I got into this was by telling you that your goal has to be eternal. Right? Krishna, Krishna praying into Siddha. It can't be something that's temporary, your goal, because that's the whole problem. You're chasing after things that don't endure. Whereas you want enduring life and enduring happiness. Right? So you have to have a goal that's eternal. So the life in Krishna Lok, the life in Braj, it's eternal. It's made up of these different uh, sentiments. Vatsalya, Sakya, Madhurya primarily, some Dasya mixed with Sakya also. Mm. These Charibhav. Four, four bhavas. But then you may think, yes, I want to pursue that bhava, it's eternal, but then you're going to appear there like a new person. So, as a beginning, right? Now you enter the Leela, there's a beginning. So we said it has a beginning, it has to have an end. So, maybe you must have been there all the time. Someone will try to resolve like you must have been here all the time. And somehow you dreamed and ended up here or something. You know, mm -hmm. like, so you did something. But otherwise it has a beginning. No, no, you don't understand. As I said, the Surup Shakti is like a sea of potentiality. So what is it doing? It's always expressing itself in relation to the will of Bhagavan in newer and newer ways all the time, eternally expressing itself. So the bhava of Sakya, the bhava of Madhurya, the bhava of Madhurya, of Vatsalya, is exp they're expressing themselves constantly in newer and newer ways. That's what's happening all the time. 
One of the new ways is, here's a new gopa. But it's not a new thing. It's what happens there. It's the nature of the place. It's the way in which the Sarup Shakti uh, uh, functions, if you will. So the Bhav is one, but it has unlimited expressions, you understand, by which it, it, it plays as Krishna. And there's no limit to that, ever. So forever and ever, there's a newness that, it, it, like praying, is described as being full. And what is it? It's um, and always increasing. Who said it? It's full and always. How can it be both? This is the, this is the math of the spiritual world. You see, it's the, it's beyond logic. Hmm? Such things can be known by feeling, by loving. So to enter there, that is our ideal. And there, that beautiful place, hmm, where uh, it's just, uh, it's, the, it's the full face of Bhakti Ananda, the Jeeva has some Ananda, Atmananda. Sanatana Goswami says, okay, after a long argument in Brihad Bhagavatam, it's true, you could attain self-realization without Bhakti like Socrates did. You could. He's making an argument that to attain Brahmananda <coughs> must be some bhakti. Hmm? You cannot get liberation without bhakti. Some bhakti. Hmm? If you mix jam with bhakti, then you can get mukti. Without bhakti, not only is there no mukti, without bhakti and varnashram, there are no fruit either. That's why Vishnu is included amongst all the gods and goddesses that you worship. That's what Varnashram is, many gods, many goddesses. That's why Krishna says what? Sarva Dharma Pritya Mam Ekam. One God. Me. That's the difference. That's Bhakti. And many gods, then you, 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 you there's too many gods. <laughs> you can't get the you can't get the desired result. Many gods, many goddesses. But one god, then you can focus all your attention there, and then you can get a very extraordinary result. But your attention is focused here, there, and everywhere. As many gods and goddesses as there are material desires. So the harness those material desires somehow, bring you in touch with those gods and goddesses, do dharma, thankfully. And from there, we make inquiry. After Dharma Jagnasu and to Brahma Jagnasu, in the Upanishad, that is only the beginning. The, 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 the Abed perspective is prominent. The oneness of the Jiva and Brahman. The oneness of the Jiva and Brahman. If I may ask you, what is the one thing in the world that most resembles God? What is most like God in this world? What will your answer be? Me? You? Hmm? The sense of I. Hmm? That's different than everything and all thoughts about things. It's beyond thought. What can you say about it? Hmm? The, de the definition of consciousness in um, the, uh, I think it's maybe Stanford Encyclopedia, is something like that thing that you can't think about, <laughs> that you can't. What can you say about it? We often say that we define things by way of, in comparison to other things, right? The way we define things is it's like this, it's like, ah, oh, okay. But it's not like anything, it's not a thing. How will it be defined? How will it be? It's you. You are defining everything. <laughs> How you measure the ruler? Oh, the ruler measure itself. It's the measuring instrument. It's, and it's immeasurable. The atma is immeasurable. It means you can't capture it in the fist of your intellect and know it. And it is only spark of chit shakti, tatasta, chit. Hmm? What is Bhagavan? Then what is bhakti by which he becomes captured entirely? If bhakti comes in our heart, what is our, what is our potential then? The potential of to be happy. 
through self-realization is such a small thing. Sanatana Goswami says, yes, it's true. You could become self-realized without bhakti. But of course you cannot get Sayuja Mukti or any other type of Mukti. But you could become self-realized. And then he very thoughtfully makes the point, so, so but you know, who cares? What's the what if you in the words, if you if you if you they say second doesn't count. Jivan Mukta, to be a Jivan Mukta, is the penultimate stay, stay step before Videha Mukti entering into, into, into Brahman. So you can become a Jivan Mukta without Bhakti. And Sanatana so thoughtfully says, so what? Who cares? He almost made it. Oh. <laughs> he almost made it. Is that to be celebrated? Or is that to be is that to be wept over? He almost made it and he fell. He almost made it. That's not something to celebrate. Hmm? Oh, he's a big Jivan Mukta. Om Narayan. <laughs> he's a big Jivan Mukta. He doesn't care for anyone. He's Swatantra, independent. Hmm? Yeah. Without Bhakti, yet he knows himself as Atman. Still, he can't get out from the gunas. What does Krishna say? Mama Maya, Duratya, they're not possible. It's my Maya. And unless you like me, then you never get out. He's, he's like saying like this Mama Maya, Duratya, Mami, we papa didn't take. My only tongue, Duranti, take. We want to talent if you want to cross over that. It's very easy. You take shelter of me. But if you don't serve me, but to speak of you from bhakti, my very compassionate nature in this world, uh, go back to go back to you know Punar Musika, again become a mouse. That's the story. <laughs> again become a mouse. So um, this um, opportunity of bhakti. The dispensation of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is a very, very extraordinary opportunity for us and it culminates in the Prayoja in entering into the Leela, right? From where there's no return. The goal, the ideal, is eternal. Hmm? You can be, be like under the influence of the Surup Shakya, be a unit of love, a new, a new, a, a, a fresh expression of love, of Sakyabhav, of Madhuryabhav. These are the opportunities. So in such a place, then, how can there be some anxiety? Because I said the place is filled with anxiety. Right? Because Nanda Maharaj doesn't have a son. But what this anxiety is, this is just another face of that Bhakti Rasa, some sense of separation and the, the sankalpa, the will, the, the, the united, unified will of the entirety of the Braj is like an, an undercurrent, the undercurrent will is bringing about the birth of Krishna. Krishna is, is born in, in Bhakti. Right? Bhakti is the birth of Krishna. Hmm? In Brahman, there's no bhakti. So you can't see him, you can't touch him, you can't. He's everywhere, but you can't see him anywhere. Hmm? He knows everything, but you can't know him at all. There's no knowing there. There's no, there's no talking, no, no, no experience. There's a very unpalatable, desirable, undesirable conception of perfection that we find um, in Brahma Sayuja, in, in indeterminate, absolute. And why, what is the difference? Bhakti, the Surup Shakti. This is making, as I say often, he was everywhere, move and dance. 
So that animated place, the animating force, is bhakti and the will of the jiva, that means the mercy, the opportunity of bhakti comes to us, and then we have to exercise our will in terms of effort. And as the will is uh, exercised, and bhakti does the work of cleansing the heart, then she begins to decorate the heart. And now the will of the jiva is still operative. And so the opportunity that has come by mercy is developed by the will of the jiva in the sadhana, the advanced stages of sadhana. Then the will of the jiva fill in the details. Hmm? You, the mercy is, I got opportunity for Sakya Bhav. I got opportunity for Madhurya Bhav. Hmm? <coughs> now the details, well the details, well, that will be filled in. I mean somebody may give you some advice. Somebody may tell you something. Somebody may point out, oh, these are, this is the, this is the possible, this is where the, in general, you can go to you know, Sanat Kumar Samhita, you can find out what a Manjari looks like, what a basic age is, I can tell you. You can think about that and so forth, that maybe an aid, Gurudev may help us that way, but, but the will of the Jeeva and Zadam is what makes it happen. The response to the mercy and the details are filled out. So, anyway, long story, but the point is that the, the birth of Krishna, if you will, is in one sense arising out of the the anxiety, which is an unspoken will of all the inhabitants of Vrindavan. And Purnamasi is now appearing on the scene. Sorry for the roundabout you know, <laughs> explanation, but uh, Purnamasi is appear, appearing on the scene. And here she's, I've, I've, I've uh, described her as Jiva Goswami, is where, there's some, where he has some difference from Rupa Goswami. Rupa Goswami has her, her name is Purnamasi, it means the full moon. He, she's dressed in white. In Radha Krishna Gonadesh Deepika. In Gopal Champu, she's dressed in saffron. Jiva Goswami em emphasizes her, her, her role as a mystic in the Braja Lila. Hmm? Unmarried, mystic, stands out from everybody else. Hmm? She appears in the Braj and she has some mystic insight. And her insight is that Nanda and Yashoda are going to have a son. It's happening. Mm -hmm. This is the news that when she first touches in, down in Braj, she shares with them. So she relieves all the anxiety of everybody in, in the Braj. And the celebratory mood starts to arise in this regard. She's told the secret. So she's appearing. Yasoda Mai is pregnant. The word is not out, but she knows as a mystic. And she's accompanied by Madhu Mangal. Hmm? Accompanied by Madhu Mangal, who is uh, introduced by her as the student of Narada. Hmm? See what we said here. As a student of Narada, but is that a description of Narada? A student of Narada? That is a Leela description. From a Leela perspective, we would say, Madhu Mangal is a student of Narada, as is Purnamasi coming from outside of Braj, into the Braj, hmm, at a certain time. But from a Tattva perspective, then how can, how can Madhu Mungo be the student of Narada? It should be the other way around. Do you understand? Brahma, Narada is like, is, is, is in, in, in Western um, terminology, has been described uh, over the decades as the farcical Brahman. He's always, you know, Narada is a, is, a, is a sage, but he does some, he's kind of a, a you know, he told Kamsa, 
what, what is Narada telling Kamsa? <laughs> Krishna's already been born and so forth. Why is he doing this? He's in the background, kind of a, a Purnamasi-esque type of yoga maya type of figure orchestrating and uh, acting in ways sometimes that are uh, questionable, like in Ramayana. Where he got, what is he got? He got the monkey's face, you know the story? Anyway, so he's a, uh, uh, yeah, so in the, when what, what is, what is the, all these alivas, right? Outside of the brudge, what are they? Tudutura, Dwarka, Ayodhya, Vaikunda, they are all partial manifestations of the Braj Lila because they're all partial manifestations of Krishna, who is the center of those Leelas. So Krishna's retinue goes with him in part, wherever he goes in part. If part of him goes somewhere, some part of, of his associates go with him. Hmm? You understand? So, for example, we, we find Balaram is there, that's Lakshman. Right? Wherever, they, wherever Krishna goes, then, of course, Balaram is going everywhere with him. That's another thing. We have to get to that. Hmm? We have to have a couple of days maybe to get there. But, <laughs> <laughs> but, but he's with him everywhere. Wherever, wherever Krishna goes, Balaram is there. Hmm? He's very unlike anybody else. Because wherever any other avatar or Prakash or Krishna goes, they're accompanied by, by a Shakti Tattva, and they have a complete emotional life. Ram has his Sita, and Ryan has his Lakshmi, and the Shringa has his Lakshmi. Mm -hmm. Balram, however, outside of Braj, he's got some unknown wife. Nobody knows her name. Mm -hmm. A few of them. That's a whole story how that came about. We'll get to that. But in Braj, outside of Braj, there's, a, there's some secondary reason why he, he married Revati. He has a consort there. If he goes to, if that's Mahasankar, Mulsankarshan. Mahasankarshan, of course, in Vaikuntha. Yeah, there's a corresponding Lakshmi. And then, then Lakshman. Yes, who's his wife? I know, but you probably don't know. And that's the point. <laughs> Who knows? It was Bhakti. It was Lakshman's wife. Hmm? Right. Her name is Urmila, but it's, it's, it's like if you watch a famous movie, a great movie, and if there's the hero and the heroine, and the hero has a best friend, and the best friend's married too. We don't know who she is or, you know, whatever. <laughs> He's got the idea. But, that's, but his role is something else. This is Bhakti. Hmm? Wherever Krishna is going in any form, Balaram is there. And three is not a crowd. You understand? Three is not a crowd. There's Lakshmi, there's, there's the Shringa, and Seish is also there. Balaram is also there. Where is he? He's everywhere. <laughs> there's his shoes, his crown, his umbrella, his bed. He's the bed. Where Ram lies with Sita, hmm? he's everywhere, but not in a way that will get him, that will, 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 ups, will, will, will uh, inhibit that rasa. Hmm? Same in Braj, and Braj is overtly not involved. Hmm? Anyway, we have to get to that, but hmm? but point is that I'm making is that just as Krishna, we'll get to it, yes, maybe not today, but as Krishna expands for different leelas, so air partial manifestations, and so his associates are going. So, therefore, from a tactical point of view, Narada must be an incarnation of Madhumanga. He's the farcical Brahman of the Braj. He's not a coward. He's in Sakurasa. He's a Priyanarmasaka. But he is a, a Brahman. He's not a Vaishya. And he's the first one to let you know that. <laughs> And there's certain privileges that go with that, that he's very quick to, uh, to uh, uh, remind everyone of. <laughs> so he, anyway, so, so he, he's introduced from a Leela perspective, and it fits, of course, he, the student of Narada, coming from outside, I am as well, we are here, and, and we've ended the project, we've come to live here, we're bringing a message, and 
so that people are are very much enamored by Born Masi. Not much, not so much by by Mono Mongol because he's pretty young, and uh, and he's a Brahmin. Uh, yeah, another part of this, of course, is that the Braj Lila and Vaishnavism, while it fully honors Varnashram and the Brahmins within Varnashram. At the same time, it says, but we actually stand on the head of our Nashram. Savai pum saparotano yadobhati bhaktir bhogsuja. Right? This is a, it's another kind of dharma. What is it? Shama eva ikevala. This is what Gaudiya Vaishnava says. Varnashram. Shama eva ikevala. It is a waste of time. Who can say that? This is the dharma obtained in the Shastra. Who can say that? This is the voice of Bhagavatam. Hmm? This is the New Testament of the Eastern Revelation. No longer the laws, but now the doctrine of love. And Shrama Ebu Kebala. If you do, it says, Bhagavatam, she says, if you do the Dharma, but you don't get a taste for, for, um, for Krishna, and you won't. It can't produce that for kind of fruit. You've wasted your time. And if, if you give up the Dharma for Bhakti, and if it, and Nara says later on, and you're not successful, you fall down, what then? You shouldn't have done that. No, he says, no, that's all right. You get up again from that spot and you go forward. So Bhakti Bhagavatam is, 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 is really dancing on the head of Varnashram. That's one of the reasons that this Madhu Mongol, this Brahman, is such a prominent character in the Brajliva, where his Brahmanhood is made fun of. And we fully respect the Brahman, if we can find them. We fully respect them. But at the same time, what Vaishnavism is, what 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 uh, what Vrindavan is, there, Varnashram is there as a, as a prop. Hmm? You understand? It's a prop of the drama. It's it's, it's driven by Bhava. Hmm? We can't just take Varnashram sensibilities out of the Lila and import them here and think. Now we've, now we've got Goloka. Women stand in the back, and we, we, we now arranged it. It's Goloka, just like this. You have to take the bow from there. Hmm? You take the bow from there, then you can, it may play out in so many different ways relative to the circumstance and the situation. Bhava makes the rules. Hmm? <laughs> so point only is that anything that could be achieved by Varnashram, that will be there and more. Anything that can be achieved by Vaidhi Bhakti, that will be there and more. After all, Nanda Maharaj is a perfect Vaidhi Bhakti, worshipping the Shringa Dev, the Shringa Shila. Hmm? And, and that's why Madhu Mangal, a homeless boy, he has no parents, he never ages. When Krishna is born and reaches the age where it's time for his his, this is in the Prakat Lila, the Manifest Lila, for his Sakya Bhava to start to express itself. This then, that's when Madhu Mongol and, 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 and Krishna meet. You know the story, the gopis, they heard that because of Krishna's astrological chart, it was not going to be possible for them to marry him who was the, their heart's desire. Hmm? Because his chart said, at a young age, he's going to leave town. And so you can't marry him, he's going to go away. Then, so, so therefore, with great reluctance, mm -hmm. at, a, at a force of the law that was contradictory to the love in their hearts, all the bridge busy parents who wanted their daughters to marry Krishna, made some arrangement to marry somebody else. And Gopikas became concerned. 
We will not do it. We will not follow. We don't care if it is the law. We will revolt. They went to the bank of the Jumuna. And they came from different parts. From all over the branch. And they met, oh, you are here. Oh, you are here too. And you? And what's your name? This was their group. They came from different groups, but they were part of one group. This is our group. We have this kind of feeling. We don't care. We came from that ashram. We came from this song or that one. They want to hear about Krishna. They want to work. If these ideas are, if they find interesting, if they chant, we chant. That's yeah. our group. There should be a group hmm, wherever you can find Krishna Bhakti. Hmm? Good, good sadhusanga. So they, 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 there they, they gathered with the same ambition, each and every one of them. What was their ambition? Suicide. They entered, they held hands, they entered into the Jumuna to commit suicide. They would not marry anyone, such as their chastity, which is always in question. <laughs> and then the Jamuna appeared, right? She appeared and said, You can't do this. Don't worry, it's not like that. You will never have to marry anybody else. You will never have to be with another man, ever. Take my word for it. So some goddess is appearing. So they're simple people. Goddess from the river. An apparition <laughs> becomes manifest and starts to speak. You, you take it seriously. <laughs> so they, all right, and under her direction, they began to walk back to the shore, wherein, very concerned, Brinda Devi had arrived with Purnamasi and Nalamunga. Brinda Devi was very concerned that because of what was taking place, she went to get Purnamasi, who said, you don't have to worry, you don't have to worry. It's, it's never going to happen. It's, it, you don't have to worry about it. But still, concern. So they arrived, and they cons consoled them, the gopis, and then they said, we better check on Krishna. Because they're committing suicide because they can't, have him, and he has them only in his heart, I think. They can hold it back. They have to express it, see how they've expressed it. In a public way, although it's private, they become a very public thing. The whole, all the girls committed suicide. See how they want to make their love known. Even when trying to hide it, it shows itself. If we try to hide our father, it will come out in so many places. If we try to show it in budding stage, it will go away. Hmm. Falls prey to this, then the light, the spark of the Baba, that will go dim. Hmm. That should be kept carefully within. And it will come out of us. That means it, 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 will, it will grow. You will protect it. It will grow, and then it, it has to come out. It, has, it will be taken advantage of. Hmm? So it came out in such a way. And, but the question is, how does Krishna feel? Hmm? Jimuna asked the question, the deity, how does Krishna feel? I just told them, don't worry, to stop them. But is it a one-sided affair? When Allah said, no, he feels the same way. But he doesn't show it. Come with me. So they went, Brinda Devi, Madhu Mongol, Jamuna, to a certain extent Jamuna, and there was Krishna meditating. It's a dark, moon is out, Krishna's meditating. You know in Dwarka he meditates, right? In Dwarka every morning he meditates on himself, <laughs> because he's gone. But in Vrindava he meditates on Radha. 
and he weeps. His meditation is very successful. Hmm? Tears and bliss. So Purnamasi comes and whispers something hmm? that corresponds, of course, with his heart, as if to say, I know how you're feeling. You don't have to hide it. You're in good company here. Hmm? You cannot share that, obviously, with your parents or so many of the elders. You're not at a point even where you've been able to have close enough friends to share it with friends. And the old friends can't share that either. They can't deal with it. Oh, he's got a girlfriend. Yuck. <laughs> Some of them. We would go, oh, he's not with us anymore. Something like that. So, Puri Masi spoke to him in such a way that he could come out with it. I know how you feel. You're in safe, safe situation here. And so Krishna's meditation is broken. He looks, and there is Madhu Mangal, Purnamasi, and Brenda Devi. And Purnamasi takes Madhu Mangal's hand and puts it in Krishna's hand. He said, you too, you, you have something in common. You have something in common. Hmm? <coughs> She's ex expressing to Krishna, you can share all of your feelings of love for the gopis with this boy, with this kind of boy. All those feelings can be shared. And they have a sadhudayam, a sympathetic heart. Madhavamala has a sympathetic heart. He can understand it. Hmm? He has some feeling for that. It, it, it is no deep enough for his own sakya bhav. Hmm? That takes it to heights that exceed in excellence vatsalya bhav, where a sakya bhav ordinarily does not. Very peculiar, very special, special plus a specialty of Gaudiya Vaishnavism. Hmm? And so Krishna is able then to, and then he asks, "Who's that? Who's that girl? You don't know her? That's Brinda Devi." And she's introduced. Hmm? This is the meeting of Krishna, Brinda Devi, and Madhu Mangal. And of course, Madhu Mangal goes home, and then that's, he, he becomes um, a permanent feature in the house. Of Nanda Maharaj. After all, you have to have a Brahman around to make the offerings, to do the Arctic, to Mishrimadev. So he's a constant, uh, as portrayed in Guru Lilamrita, resident of the house of Nanda Maharaj. Here he's come on the scene along with Purnamasi. Just now, he's ageless, of course, so prior to Krishna's birth. I just described the point where Krishna was born and grew up and met him, but just to give you some background, who is Madhu Mangal? And he is then the full face of, of Narada. Narada, from a topic point of view, is his incarnation. In Gopal Champa, we did mention by Jiva Goswami in the, the Uttar Champa, uh, uh, Uttar uh, uh, yeah, Champa <laughs> section, last section. That, um, that, that Narada is an approximation of Madhu Mangal. Well, Madhu Mangal is Narada with a lot of humor added to it. Very appropriate to this uh, uh, Sakibhav. Hmm? Uh, we have to go into that. Balaram himself is, is, the, is the presiding deity over Sakirati, which is the bhava that is the best friend of Sakyabhava <laughs> amongst the bhavas. If you reflect on that, what it means to be a friend, you can appreciate that. Holding your, <laughs> your stomach with friends. <laughs> so, Purnamasi is arriving. Madhu Mangal is arriving in this scene and announcing that Krishna, Yasoda, is going to give birth to a son, relieving the anxiety of all of the Braj. And at the same time, suddenly appearing on a black mare, a, a female horse. Maybe you didn't know this, but the horse society is matriarchal. Did you know that? So much for the stallion. 
kind of, you know, it's a matriarchal society. So the ladies, they leave, <laughs> there's no real stallions, because they're depicted by the, in the movies. <laughs> but anyway, on uh, a mayor, a black mayor, comes another lady, and that lady is bearing a child as well. And so there's a natural bond that's formed between Yashoda at this time and Rohini is her name. Hmm? Rohini is the name of the asterism that is uh, graphically depicted as a red cow. A red cow of plenty. Hmm? Connection with the harvest and so forth. Uh, uh, a sense of, of plentifulness and abundance and so on. And she's filled up with Balaram. Hmm? Though the partial manifestation of Balaram was manifest in the womb of Devaki. And Krishna told Yoga Maya, Sanatana Prabhu explains in the second, second chapter of the 10th canto of Bhagavatam, when Krishna told Yoga Maya, as the text says, transfer your, what is it, seventh child into the womb of Rohini. So the partial expansion of Balaramananta had done his work making the ground fertile for the transmission of Diksha from Vasudeva to Devaki and the birth of Krishna, born as he is out of Bhakti. And now she should be transferred into the womb of, of, of Rohini. And Sanatana says, because Krishna said, thought and said, my Leelas in Braj will not be so happy without Ram there. They're so happy, they're so happy that without Ram, they're not so She is bearing then Ram and there's a natural affinity. And the affinity, as I've said in the narrative, the poetic narrative we read this morning, is only exceeded in one sense the affinity between the fraternity between Rohini and Tishoda is only exceeded by the affinity of their two sons for one another will come to pass upon their birth, Balaram issuing forth first, beautiful child. Hmm? So beautiful that his defects were overlooked. What were his defects? His defects were very substantial, but his beauty and charm was so great. Imagine if you had a child that was born deaf, dumb, lame, and blind. It was so beautiful that when the nurse told you that, you just, it didn't matter. <laughs> you couldn't hear it. It didn't, it didn't even register with you. Hmm? This is the beauty of Balaram. Hmm? And that was his more or less his condition. Like unconscious as to the world around him. It would be a big cause for concern. And there was a concern slightly. So the shoulder would took him and put him on her lap. And inside her belly was Krishna, only a week away. And then Balaram became animate. And then he put him aside. <laughs> so they, <laughs> they tell something who he is, right? Mm -hmm. Save the Bhagavan. Yes. Uh, the Bhagavan who is saved and the Bhagavan who is or served, I should say. Bhagavan who is served and the Bhagavatam who is the servitor. That is Balaram. Mm -hmm. Savia, what is it? Seva, Sevika, Sevika. Sevika Bhagavan, both. These two, they go together. Hmm? There's not an incarnation of Balaram and Krishna. There's an incarnation of Krishna and Balaram. Hmm? These are, they're in tandem. Hmm? Uh, as I say, wherever Vishnu avatars, wherever Krishna avatars, Balaram is there in some form, right? Close, interwoven, hmm? in, in a serving disposition. And so, but in, but in Krishna Leela, 
he's also there, but in, in, his, in a fully pronounced way, and as a friend, the best friend of Krishna, but his, he personifies, his, he, he's actually the root, Kaviraj Goswami teaches, of the serving disposition or the, 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 the bhakti disposition in every devotee. Is Abhiman say Mul Balaram? So, with the birth of Balaram, then is the birth of, uh, arguably, the birth of of Sakirati, the full face of Sakirati, as it's expressed in Braj. So, we'll stop there for now. There's at least plenty more to to say uh, in the following. Days, if you, if you can uh, attend further my long winded uh, discussions. Any questions? Yes. Kumar, you just said that uh, Baram is a full expression of uh, Sakya Rati. Yeah. But uh, he doesn't participate in the Madhurya Rasa, he's not Puyanarma Sakha, so how can it be that he's a full expression of Sakya Rati? Yeah, yeah. Chodzi o to, że Maharaj powiedział, że Balaram jest pełnym takim wyrazem Sakirati, ale wiemy, że on nie, nie bierze udziału w tych rozrywkach z Gopi, czyli on nie jest Priyana Masaką, czyli co to znaczy, że jest niepełnym wyrazem Sakirati? Because he presides over that. Because that form of Sakirati is also some Bandaluga. So then Rabbi Bhakti, you have Kamaluga and some Bandaluga. So He's presiding over the Samanuga. That is a form of, and he, as, a, as the presiding deity in Braj over Samanuga, which includes Vatsalya and Dasya, but here we're talking about Sakya. He's the presiding deity, therefore his Sakya Bhava is, Bhava is mixed with, with Dasya. It's mixed also with, um, with Vatsalya. It cannot mix in the same way with Madhurya. I will go into this in the next discussion, but in short and brief, because he presides over the very rati, the very rasa hmm, that the Priyanaras have, in that sense he's the full expression. Yes, but they have, they are the fullest expression of Sakrasi imbued with the very rasa. Hmm, imbued with that. So there is, there is a difference. But their Sakya rasa, they are, they are also devotees of Balaram hmm, and Krishna and Ram. But we'll go into that tomorrow. That's another, where we go from here, we go there. What is the role of Madhuri Rasa in relation to Sakya Rasa? So, what's the time? 12.50. 12 what? 50. Okay, pretty long. Is it? So now it's time for Maprashat. Some people say, Balaram appeared at noon. So we'll take it. We'll take Prashat. Sri Balaya Purnima Motsamtiti.